which direction, I say, is our tolerance headed? That is the focal question this evening. Should we go become so tolerant in the garb of becoming a liberal society? What people say is an open society. Should we become so tolerant that we begin to grow immune to everything that goes against India's national interest? Last year, there was a bizarre debate. A bizarre debate broke up when JNU happened. Everything was suddenly about, can I run down my country and be considered to be a liberal? What was my education for? Why am I educated? Why did I go to a foreign university? Why am I in JNU if I cannot have my own opinion on whether India should break up or not? I mean, if your position is so infantile that the only way to provoke people is to demand the secession of India, then you should go back to kindergarten. But the point is not that. The point is, I recall being in the studio as the headlines were flying past last year, trying to wrap my head around how not standing up for the flag or not standing up for the national anthem, had suddenly in India in February 2016 become some kind of a fashion statement for a particular faction. And while I make my position clear, it was only a matter of time that I saw a pattern to it. Now, there is a pattern to it. The fact is, there is a thread of tolerance for those who oppose standing up for the flag. But those who say it's OK to make a fashion statement and sit while the national anthem is playing, is exactly the same lobby that clamors and fights and demands mercy for Yaqub Memon. Should I be blind to it? And the reality is this, and I'm asking a question. Is tolerance in India defined as supporting the likes of Yaqub Memon and keeping quiet about the celebration of our flag or our national anthem? This is a question I think we must ask now. Is it liberal and tolerant that a convicted terrorist is labeled innocent and the lives of 257 people who died in the 1993 attacks takes a backseat to the human rights of Yaqub Memon? Is it liberal and tolerant that a man labeled the architect of the worst terror attacks in India is projected like a face of victimhood and persecution. And if it is liberal, and if it is tolerant, then why is it not liberal and a burning degree of saying that we will not tolerate talks with Pakistan till they stop killing our soldiers? Why is it not liberal to call Maoists out on their violence? Why is it not liberal to question the selective hypocrisy of those returning their awards? And why is it not liberal to question someone who refuses to stand up for the national anthem? I ask the counter questions. Let's go on Jalli Kattu versus Greenpeace. In a, why is it that in April 2015, when my group of journalists had put out in the public domain official documents showing that the intelligence agencies of India had reasons to believe that Greenpeace was not working only against India's economic interest, but also had its accounts frozen and license deregistered on the basis of documents that proved that this foreign funded NGO indulged in several FCRA violations, why, ladies and gentlemen, was there a muteness by those who positioned themselves as tolerant and liberal? All those people who spoke about it, not one of them said that Greenpeace was breaking the rules. These are the same people who took a position on Jallikattu. I see a motive there. And why is it that those who stand for the environmental good that Greenpeace supposedly is doing in India are completely quiet about the nuclear installations in the rest of the world? Why have we become so immune to allowing those self-proclaimed quote-unquote liberals of this country to become torchbearers of those who oppose India's national interest? The Salman Rushdie ban versus the Taslima ban. In November 2015, a senior member of the Congress party by the name of P. Chidambaram, he strolled out suddenly and he had a revelation. He said that the ban on Salman Rushdie's satanic verses was a mistake. You remember that? This fantastic acknowledgement by Chidambaram, 27 years after the book was banned, during the Rajiv Gandhi government. 
Salman Rushdie then tweeted by saying, and I quote him, how many more years before the ban is corrected? Unquote. Relevant question. Relevant question, ladies and gentlemen. But tell me, how many people stood up for Taslima Nasreen in Hyderabad in 2007? When Asaduddin Oasis All India MIM attacked her with bricks at a book release function. Where was the media then? Where was this liberal media when a woman called Taslima Nasreen was being physically attacked and assaulted in Hyderabad by a party whose leader stands up in parliament, OAC, and says that I am a democrat and I am a liberal? None of them, none of these, the liberal media hid its necks like ostriches at that point of time. Nobody spoke a word. How many people stood up for Taslima when 20 hoodlums of the All India MIM, led by an elected MLA, physically attacked her in a press club in Hyderabad? Was it tolerant of secularism not to take to the streets then? Questions we must ask. Yasin Malik and the Huriyat versus Army. On February 13th, 1992, Yasin Malik was arrested in Delhi on charges that he received lots of cash from Pakistan's ISI for promoting terrorist organizations in the Kashmir Valley. They recovered 4.5 lakh from his possession. They were charge sheeted by the CBI. It was alleged that during 1985 to 1992, Malik conspired with four other accused from different terrorist outfits for aiding and abetting terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. And yet today, there seems to be a lobby portraying Yasin Malik as the messiah of the Kashmiri people. I ask why? Why are these the same people who fight for the freedom of Yasin Malik, the same people who went quiet when Uri, Baramula, and Pathan Court happened later this year? Think of the examples that I am giving you. Jalli Kattu, Greenpeace, Rashti, Taslima, Vishparupam, National Interest, Yasin Malik, Huriyat, Yakub Memon.